I think I just like figured something out. What? <coughs> this sucks. <sighs> yeah, this, this really sucks. <laughs> this sucks more than anything that has ever sucked before. The Disappointments Room was directed by DJ Caruso, who also made Disturbia, and stars Kate Beckinsale, and it's about a family that moves into an old house, and in the attic of this old house, they find a room, and this room holds a very frightening past, and when Kate Beckinsale stumbles into this room, some shit starts happening in their house, and in her mind, and to be honest, I really don't actually know what's happening. The best way for me to describe this movie is to say that my favorite part of the entire experience was that I got to see it alone. There was no one in the theater, just me. So, you know, that was kind of cool. Besides that, uh, it was pretty much a living hell. The Disappointments Room is a movie that was made by Relativity Studios. This studio has since gone bankrupt and a ton of films are now up in the air. This film was on the shelf for a long time, a few years. And I think a lot of the people involved with it were probably thinking, oh God, they're releasing it. <sighs> Great. I'm sitting here right now struggling to locate anything positive to say about this movie, and it's really hard. Kate Beckinsale is an attractive woman, and the director of photography clearly has a professional career lighting films. <laughs> This one is really bad, people. I struggled to comprehend how it was made, and I'm not exaggerating. I went to this movie, and I was actually kind of excited. I like Kate Beckinsale. I like horror films quite a bit, and I like scary, creepy old houses, and so this movie had those things going for it, and I do like Disturbia. That's why I have the Blu-ray, so I was like, okay, DJ Caruso. This could be good. It's written by Wentworth Miller, who's an actor really well-known for Prison Break. He also wrote the movie Stoker. Some of the worst films I've seen so far this year, movies like Norma the North or Cell, these films at least have a beginning and a middle and an end and it feels like you're watching a movie. I knew how long this movie was going into it. According to IMDb, it's about 92 minutes. I looked at my watch at one point and was shocked to discover there was like five more minutes in the film and it didn't even feel like it was over. In fact, it felt like nothing had happened because nothing happens. This entire film makes no fucking sense. The husband character in this film I found insufferably annoying. At one point, someone asks him what he does for a living and he says that he plays Xbox and takes naps while he watches his wife work. What a stand-up guy. Kate Beckinsale plays an architect in this film, and I guess that's their way of explaining why they're in this really shitty old house that no one would ever want to live in because she's an architect and I guess she's going to fix it up. And the film's way of showing her being an architect <laughs> is kind of like she just stands over blueprints and goes like, hmm, no, <laughs> architect stuff, <laughs> write this and uh, do that and measure that, and I'm an architect. <laughs> It's one of those movie jobs, you know, where it doesn't fit the character, it doesn't feel real, it doesn't feel like it's natural or authentic at all, but the writers needed that to be in the script so that they could get the characters to do the things they want them to do in the movie, and it's just, it's atrocious. This entire film honestly feels like an amateur movie, and I know it's not because it's directed by DJ Caruso and it's written by Wentworth Miller. These are not amateur talents. What? happened. I told you I'm big on structure. This movie doesn't have it. It's a long series of horror movie cliches that are unforgivably unscary. If I was tired, I could have fallen asleep during this movie and slept like a baby. Nothing frightening happens. It, it's it's actually unbelievable this movie got made and is released in theaters. It's not scary. There are no characters in this movie. There's a very poor attempt to weave a tragic backstory into these characters' lives that has nothing to do with the horrific element of the film. Which, spoiler warning, you don't have to see this movie. Just don't see it. Keep your money. You deserve your money. If you have money, you, you keep it. You put it in your wallet and... You don't give it to this film. So I'm going to spoil some shit because it just, it has to happen. It, it has to. I, I'm sorry. Kate Beckinsale basically realizes that she's living in a house that has a disappointments room up in the attic. A room where the former tenants many years ago put their deformed child because they were disappointed in this child because she wasn't perfect. This is apparently a real thing in history because parents were 
barbaric or something, I, I don't know. None of this is harnessed into anything that is actually frightening in this movie. The horrific elements of this film, the film's title, The Disappointments Room, the entire thing surrounding all the marketing of this movie, this, this room that we're supposed to be so scared of, it's barely in the movie. The movie is about like the tragedy of their past and it doesn't at all fit into what's actually happening with this room and she's investigating and starts believing in ghosts and then she gets visions. Somebody hangs himself in their yard there's a worker who comes to help them with things in the house who constantly hits on Kate Beckinsale. That goes nowhere. She gets visions of killing her child and things that just don't make sense. There's this really awkward dinner scene where she yells at everybody. Ah. The husband's entire arc is basically him just going, what's that over there? Is that a cat? Come, come, come here. Come here, son. Come here. Come here. Come here, son. Come here. There's a point in this movie where they do the horror movie exposition scene. You guys know what I'm talking about. Every single one of these movies has it, where the character visits an expert of some kind in the field of the paranormal who explains to our protagonist what's happening. At that point in the movie, I checked out. I was like, okay, they've, they've given up entirely. But I still, of course, paid attention, and I gotta say, really, honestly, nothing in this film makes sense. There's ghosts in the house, she's had a bad past with trauma, and the husband is upset, and maybe she might commit suicide side and then not, there's nothing. There's no character arc. There's no character depth of any kind. The characters in the film end in the exact same place they were in the beginning. They go nowhere. The only thing that changes is our knowledge of things that have happened to these characters in the past. The characters themselves go through no evolution of any kind. So the characters are boring. The performances are mediocre at best. The quality of the direction in this movie is basically reduced to the art of framing something that's happening in front of you and making sure that everything is in the frame, and okay, action, cut, All right, we got it, let's, let's move on to the next shot. What are we gonna do for this shot? Uh, angle the camera over there and make sure that you get Kate Beckinsale's face in frame, okay? Where's, where's the hookers for later? I really don't feel like going on anymore. This is one of the worst movies of the year, easily. It's one of the worst horror films I've ever seen, and I've seen a lot. The Disappointments Room, of course, gets an F. Yeah, I don't see it. It's really, really not worth your time. I mean, it is, it's not at all. Like, sometimes when I see a movie and I think, eh, that wasn't that great. It's not worth your time, guys. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your time with this movie. Don't. Guys, thank you so much, as always, for watching. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuck Don't see this film.